Welcome to LSC. It's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Today I have basketball guru with me, Boo Williams. Glad to have you here today, Boo. No problem, Bob. Glad to be here. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about your growth through the city of Hampton. Now, you played, uh, everybody knows you as a basketball uh, player and, and what you've done with AAU and basketball and everything, but that was the only sport you played growing up. No, no, I'll tell you what, Bob. When I first started, I played baseball. I played baseball down in Phoebus Little League. Matter of fact, I want to tell you a story. My first time I went for baseball, I got cut. Oh. <laughs> I got cut. And my brother made the team. <laughs> and I rolled home that day on my bicycle. I said, I would never get cut in anything in life again. So that's the true story. So I, I started Little League, and then the following year, I tried, I tried for baseball again, Little League baseball. So I played Little League baseball. Okay. And then I also played for Curry Coast football. My father helped coach. And we, and we played Kerry Coach football. That's where I knew Kurt Newsom at. We, me and him grew up together. Okay. He's assistant coach of Virginia Tech. Well, what position did you play in, in football? Would you football, work? football was defensive tackle and a, a, a tight end. Okay. Was you always bigger than most of the kids? I was always bigger. I was, maybe not big out this way. I just got big out this way, but I was big this T way. Tall. Tall. Right, I was yeah. tall. Because we were talking earlier about because I can remember when my son played Little League Baseball in Phoebus, you were behind the plate on your knees, and you was as tall as they were. I, mean, I umpired, let me tell you, that was a great experience. Everybody should go experience umpiring baseball. I umpired Little League Baseball for five or six summers. That's real That's real talk there. Well, I, I know the, the kids enjoyed having you back there, and when I saw you back, it just blew my mind because you didn't have to squat down, you were just on your knees. No, and I tell you what, Bob, I enjoyed that. Well, that's great, I, and I'm sure the guys did too, and, and uh, to have somebody that enjoys something doing it, you, you, you take an extra interest in it. If you're just doing it because it's, eh, I have to do it, it's not the same thing. No, no you have to have a passion. Right, too. good passion. Now, when you started playing ball, uh, did they have junior high back when you was playing? We played junior high school. But I played junior high school basketball. I played junior high, I played junior high school basketball for Jerry Gentry. Okay. I, was, I played on a JV team. He kept me on, it was, back then we had a seventh grade team. Right. So I, he kept me on the seventh grade team. And then my eighth and ninth grade year, I played with Phil Lee. Phil Lee, who ended up uh, over at, at Phoebus uh, as a girls coach. Who won a state championship over there, didn't they? They won a state championship at Phoebus as a girls coach. So right. I started out with uh, up down in Spratley. And then, and then I played football with Coach Trainer. <laughs> Wade Trainer. Wade Trainer. So I know Wade Trainer. I played with Wade Trainer. And then I, I played baseball with Coach Trainer. So I played. Okay. All right, now, and then you went to the high school, but you, did you go to immediately to Phoebus? Because I know you were the first graduating class there, or did you go somewhere else first? Went to Kickatan. Okay. Yeah, but Phoebus wasn't built for that year. Okay. So I went to Kickatan, and then I didn't play JV. I played with Coach Halfway. We had a very good team that year. That year we lost to um, Ferguson. You know, back then it wasn't like it is now. We had four teams going. Right. right? And then now you had four teams and all that stuff. If you didn't win it, win the tournament. You didn't get to go. You didn't get to go. Right. You remember, you had to win the tournament. And back then we played at the Coliseum. We lost in the Coliseum to Ferguson with the Crawford boys, Joe. Joe right. Crawford and Mark Crawford. Well, because the, the Crawford, that was one of the first times you saw a kid that was about 6'3 yes, as a point that's guard. Right. So the fact that we lost to them. Because he, he, he went to Maryland with Lefty. Right. And so we lost to them. You know, we had a very good team right there with Donald Wilson, Peter Davis, Richard Tallaferro, Keith Hare. We had a real good team. And so then I played varsity, varsity football with Ben Rich. Ben Rich. Ben Rich, let me tell you what. It, it, football over Ben Rich was great, but we, we had to play Mike Horton, them guys, Mike Horton and Conrad, Revis Conrad, man. I tell you, what, I, if I could see it, my, and, and Mike used to, Coach Horton used to spit that tobacco in the football field. <laughs> Let me tell you, that made that would make you in that hot sun, that make you think twice about it. Uh, but then you got went, to, they built a new school, so you went over to Phoebus. And and I know Kickatan hated to see you oh, go. No, but that, that was a tough decision. You know, you know, back then, you know, you were loyal to your community and everything. Now right. kids not loyal to anybody. Right. But back then you were loyal to your community. It was hard leaving Kickatan because I really liked Coach Halfway and I, and I liked Coach Rich. And I was hard leaving Kickatan to go to Fevers. It was a brand new school because the first year of Fevers football, we played for Coach Smith and we played JV. We, did, we had a JV schedule. That's right, because you didn't play varsity, because you didn't have seniors. That's right, we played for, uh, we didn't have seniors. So we, and then basketball wise, I played for Coach Baker. I played right. for Arnold Baker, basketball wise, I played for right. Arnold Baker. So that was a good experience. We had a very good team. 
And then we, and then baseball I played for Ray Smith. Ray, my baseball experience was, was a great one because right, I, 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 I was a switch hitter. Right and left handed couldn't equal to 300, bad average. Wow. Well, I had Ray in here. Now he's the athletic director over at Bethel High School, and he was telling me that he was a kicker tan, and then he went to Phoebus. That's but right. I didn't know that, that you played on that I, team. I played on team. Me, I remember the story when we were playing Lafayette. Right then, Lafayette, uh, Lawrence Taylor. And when Kurt Newsom was going to fight Lawrence Taylor. He's going to fight him. Long, let me tell you what. <laughs> Kurt, I said, I'm your guy. Me, me and you boys. Let me tell you what. I'll jump in there, but I don't know how long I'm going to jump in there for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it must have been a nice experience, though, because you guys got to go in and start a whole new system over at Phoebus where you guys are going to set records. You, everything you do is new. Well, everything was new. Dr. Musman was the principal back then. Right. And Tom Baylor was assistant principal. I mean, I knew Dr. Musman from Spratley. He was a principal at Spratley, so it was new for us. It, you know, a new school. So it, it was a good experience. Tell me a little bit about Arnie Baker, because Arnie was well known in basketball at Hampton High School, and then he's a, and he would love to have gone back over to Hampton, but that wasn't open, so he went to Phoebus and and had some good teams over Phoebus. Well, we, we were good. I mean, we won the district the second year there. Right. Second year with, with me, Brian Tyler, Jerry Saunders. I mean, we had Eddie Smith. I mean, we had a good team. We had a real good team there. And we, and we won the district. We, we won the district. The second year existed, we won the district, and we lost to Mar Moy. And uh, uh, once we had to go across the water. Right. But uh, the coach Baker was good to play for, and we were fun to play for. Well, you you had, you've run into some guys that just really blow my mind. No, 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 the, no. The, the you know the the connection oh, that yeah. you have with the, the the coaches on the peninsula who've been here and have gone. It just it's unreal. So you've got I know you've got a lot of stories. Uh, but now you graduate, and you and you end up with, in Philly at St. Joe's. But that's not the only place that wanted you. No, I could have had a chance to go to Kansas. I went out to Kansas, Wake Forest. Go Carl Tate was good. Old Dominion. I really like Old Dominion with Coach Webb. Coach Webb. I mean, that came down to St. Joe's and Old Dominion. I visited Detroit with Dick Vitale. No other visit in the world because back then D Detroit was really, really good. Back then, right? I mean, they were very good back then. And Dick Vitale, they had Terry Long and John Long. I mean, Terry Tyler and John Long. So they were very good back then. And let me tell you, Detroit. But Dick Vitale told me a story that made me cry because you know, one is one his eyes. It, right, it, he's got it, a glass it, eye. Like glass eye. He told me about the glass eye. Told me how he got it. I mean, he was crying out, crying, say, "This guy." I mean, that first time, you know, he, he, he's an interesting uh, guy. Well, he's got a lot of passion for the, for the game of basketball. Oh. And, it, you know, because he not only coached in, in the college, but he also coached he, in the he pros. The, he pros but he started out as a high school coach. Right. He started as a high school coach. But, but if you watch him on TV, you can see the passion this guy has And he got. had the same amount of passion when I went to visit there. So, so I went, when I went to St. Joe's, I like Philadelphia. I mean... That's the first time I saw row houses. I never seen row houses before. So right. it was an interesting experience in Philadelphia, but I like Philadelphia. Well, now, who did you play for in Philly? Who was your coach there? First one, Herb Booth was the head coach, and Jimmy right. Ball recruited me there. And they said, but after the first year, they got fired. So I said, oh, God, what in yeah. the world? What am I going to do now? And then what happened was well, Jimmy Lyman took the job. Took the job. He was a St. Joe's guy. He was right. at American University, so he took the job with St. Joe's. So well, I played for him for three years. So that experience in itself, playing in, at the college level, so much different than the high school level. No question, playing the, the practice and that. And my final year, uh, senior year uh, at St. Joe's, we finished in top eight. We lost it to we lost it to get to the we was in the final eight, the elite eight, and we lost to Indiana at Indiana with Isaiah Thomas the year they won it. Because if we had won that game, we went to the final four. So we lost to Isaiah and uh, uh, Bobby Bobby Knight now. Well, I, that ex talk a little bit about the experience of not only playing at, at, at a college level, but going to NCAA tournament. Oh, no, I mean, because no, no, that's, no, to no, me, no, that's the, the big no, dance. No, yeah, the big, there's no experience of going to the NCAA tournament. There's the, the, the tension of the game. And then back then, you got to remember, we weren't that many teams back then, Bob. Right. I mean, it wasn't we only 64 had, teams. We 64 teams. Right. There. I mean, I don't can't remember, 32 or 48. I think it was 32, 32 teams. 32, I believe. And so, I mean, we upset DePaul. First of all, we had to upset DePaul. DePaul was number one in the country. Uh, 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 and they had um, McGuire, uh, uh, McGuire and all them guys, Cummins and all that. 
and we upset DePaul, number one team in the country. And then we got another win. And then we beat uh, Boston College. And then we had to play um, Indiana. Indiana. And back then, they, they played, uh, we had to play Indiana at Indiana. So it was 15,000 people there. It was nobody <laughs> St. Joe's fans. There was nothing but an Indiana crowd there. Well, well how big is St. Joe's? What St. Joe's, how, how about 5,000 yeah. 5, students? Not, not, not that very big. University of Indiana's. Probably got no, 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 twenty, thirty thousand. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Coming from here, going to the Judge's School, that was a different experience. Talk about a little bit about that. What, what, what made it so much different? I mean, that's the first time. So you know, I didn't. Go, we went to public school here. So going there with with Judge Richard, you had the priest teaching and all that stuff. It was a, I thought, uh, uh, you had the religious classes and all that. It was a little different. Uh, but you, you made all the adjustments you had to make. To made, do that. made all the adjustments had to make, and uh, it, it, it was a good experience. Now, was was pro bowl, pro basketball in your thinking at all? I think you hurt your knee or something. I hurt my knee in the back in high school. I mean, it was always as a kid thinking, but you know, I was an undersized. You know, I played center to my uh, last year, so nobody would take a six seven center in the, in the NBA. Right. Even then, more about take a six seven center. But I was a good player. I ended up making Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I, my first year, I had 17 points. I was like, when I finished, I was fourth for all the time leading scorer at St. Joe's. So I had a great career. I played. Right. I, I, I tell kids, you got to go somewhere you're going to play because you got to right. be happy. But then, good, good point. And I like that point because a lot of people don't understand. They think that people are just playing basketball, but you got to have a passion. You got to be happy. Yeah. You got to know that the school you're at is, it fits, fits your it personality fits, it fits or whatever. You got to be happy because it's great going to Carolina or Duke, but if you're sitting there on a bench, I mean, you will, you will whether be at North Carolina or Wilmington. You want, you want to go where you're going to play at. Right. Right. Now, then you come back to the peninsula, and you start up Boo Williams AAU basketball. And you kind of mirrored that from Sunny Hill, who for years, for well, I remember for when year, I was for, coaching. For years, Sunny Hill. Back, back in, in the north, they had, you had the Rutgers League. You know, and the, in Baltimore, you had the, the Leeds in Baltimore and D.C. and everything. And Philadelphia had the Sunny Hill League. I played in the Sunny Hill. That's the first night. The first night I played, I played against Gene Banks, Lawrence, uh, Clarence, uh, Clarence Tillman, and they had a guy called Black Magic. I mean, it, it was just amazing. That's our whole scene. So, I said when I came home, I came home after I graduated from college. I said maybe I do it on a small scale here, because you know back then I used to work at Five Star with right. Hard Garfinkel. I worked there for ten years, and Hard Garfinkel is. is it's how golf half crazy, but <laughs> when I told golf I'm gonna start a summer program in Hansville, he said, "Son, are you crazy? Them kids can't play basketball down there." True story. True story. Them people, really? Oh, them people. Them people up north said, "Them kids can't play basketball down here, son. They, they're just not gonna be good enough to play down here to, 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 to compete." So I say, "Well, we'll give it a try." So the first person I talked to was uh, Bob Tysinger. I talked right. to Bob Tysinger. Then, then I, uh, I got a hold of, uh, talked to Coach Halfway. And they said, Coach, this is what I like to do, and blah, blah, blah. And so we started out with four teams. And we used to play in T-shirts. And you know these kids now ain't playing with T-shirts. No, they, no, they, they, they got the they, full they, they, uniform. They uniform yeah. now. They get two or three sets. I mean, life is too good. So, so we, we played T-shirts, and we had four sponsors. To, for, the sponsor, we, uh, I can't remember. I think we had a uh, Tyson sponsor one, Manly Service sponsor one, Julie, Julie Wilson sponsored a team. I couldn't remember who. Casey, Casey. Casey, Casey Chevrolet? Casey, Casey Chevrolet sponsored a team. So we had four teams. The sponsorship by that time was $125, enough to pay for the uniform. We <laughs> the had a, t-shirts the and t-shirts. the pants. No, no pants. You had to wear oh. your own pants. No, we ain't get no pants. Oh. Just the t-shirts. So we had, we had probably about, i say 100 kids trying for sporty spots, sporty spots. So we had a draft and all that stuff. And we, we had a draft in my mother's living room. And, and then, then we started, that's how the Blue Wind Summer League started. It started out with four teams. And okay. now, you know, now you know where it is now. Well, yeah, but to, to, to expand, it, it's, you know, each year you say, okay, we can do a little more. You get some more sponsors. Uh, uh, is that the way it works? Well, I mean, you've beat, you got to be beating the bushes oh, yeah, year yeah, round. Year I'm round. Not... Yeah, man. I mean, when we started, we started very small. I mean, I remember I used to tell people I used to do everything. You had to be able to fish it, you had to clean the floors, you had to do the books. You had to be able to, you started from ground floor. floor. That's right. why I try to tell people, say, how do you get started? 
it's a lot of hard work. If people, you don't start as a CEO of a company. You, you start down there sweeping you, the floor. You find out what the company's you, going to be. You're going to be, and also you start to understand how the whole thing is structured and how the whole thing works, because you started from ground, uh, ground zero. Right. So we started, and then we, then we added the girls portion of the program. It was the second thing we added. Right. Then we added, I got with Butch Hopper at Aberdeen. We started with the little boys program. And then we started getting kids in the south side. So I mean, so it, well, yeah. it, 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 it started it started out here, and then it's you know how it is now. But I was talking to you earlier about when when the junior team from Russia came over. Yeah. And we played the Coliseum, and we televised yeah, that I, game. I remember. I, and uh, it was and this this was a great story, but I'm going to let you tell about what what happened with Kevin Swan. I mean, the game was tied. We said we. We need some. I think somebody must have got hurt. Somebody got hurt. We they got fouled and got hurt. Got fouled and got hurt. And so we said, we need somebody to shoot, shoot free throws. And I said, I knew Kevin Swan was a good shooter. I seen him play in Hampton a million times. I said, I've asked Kevin to come in there and shoot the, uh, shoot the free throws. I mean, that's a heck of a thing he did. With no time left on the clock to shoot two free throws for us to go to overtime. And having played for the whole 39 minutes and <laughs> 99 seconds. He had played. He came in and did a great job of hitting them two free throws and went over to him. But, uh, you know, we played the Russian team. I mean, you look where the program is now, Bob. Right. I mean, we got over 2,500 kids in the program all Well, that over. was my next question, is, is how many kids yeah. you got involved in We this got about 2,500 kids in the program. We have, look at the teams we have. We have had 42 McDonald's All-Americans. We have had 14 Players of the Year. Uh, I mean, we, I mean, I mean you, you look at our list of players. I mean, we got, we got 10 guys in the NBA. We got two girls in the WNBA. We got college coaches now. We got, we got, uh, uh, I think we got eight, uh, eight college coaches now. My sister just, you know, lost to Connecticut the other day right. in the in the Sweet Swiss team. You know, we got so many coaches. David Sis was involved. with Nikki Reed. I mean, Karen Barefoot. I mean, the list go on of people that have been involved with was just coaches. All right. Well, what is the age groups? When do, when are the the youngest you start? Eight. Eight. Now they go with like eight to ten age group, or how do you? How each do you age, each eight, is, yeah, have an eight-year-old team, a nine-year-old team, a ten-year-old team, eleventh grade, uh, uh, nine-year-old, ten, eleven, and now they change the age to grade. So now it's from third grade on up to. Oh, okay, they're doing the grades now. Yeah, right. this year they change the grade. Now and they go as high as what, seventeen or? As high as seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. And, so, and there's all things move up now. Now I'm the chairman of AU basketball boys and girls, and so everything now is just. You, you know, you look back in 30 years, your body of work in 30 years, you see a lot of things has changed. Well, I, you know, I have watched what you have done, and I just I sit back and marveled at, at the growth, that every year it gets bigger, gets better, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and you get good ball players. And I mean, you're getting players for your, your number one team, not just from the Hampton Roads area. I mean, you get them you know, from the south side. South side, we all all over the state of Virginia. We have some kids from. You know, with the new rule now, we can only have three kids outside the state of Maryland and North Carolina. But we get kids all over. I mean, this program is probably known throughout the throughout the world. So the kids want to come and play. Yeah, the kids want to play. Kids want to play. Wow. And, and the, the the exposure and the and the playing against this uh, the kind of opponents they play, the experience you just can't no, no, you, you can't. can't uh, Rate that. Well, I think the life skill. I think they, I think the good thing. This would take the most of the kids. This would grow with them, staying what they play with us the rest of their life. Just the relationships and the and the camaraderie that they have it will do all through their life. Right. Then they built a Boo Williams complex. Then they built a Boo Williams sports place, and now that. Wow. That, that, that's, I mean, and I think that's something that you know, gracious for the city of Hampton and finding partners and all that. Now we have a facility that the kids not only play basketball, we have indoor track. We have well, 30, were, yeah. we got 37 track meets in there. Because beforehand, you know, we, our idea was never to build an indoor track. Our idea was just to build ba a basketball facility. Right. But the track people say, well, we, we don't have an indoor facility. Which they don't. They don't. I mean, we run indoors, indoors at high school, or we run outdoors in the cold. They said, you know, the district meet used to be outdoors. So I so we said, we need something to, to, to have. That's in, is indoor, indoors. let's be indoors. So yeah. we went to the city of Hampton and said, well, this is something there that we can do. We can add the walkers, because the walkers, you know, the walkers didn't have a place to go right at that right. time. So the walkers had the Coliseum, Coliseum Mall, but now there's no more Coliseum Mall. Right. And they had the convention center, but the convention center wasn't really fit for what 
convention center. We'll have walkers doing that, doing conventions. Right. So this was a good place to have the walkers there and also have the indoor track there. And we have, we have wrestling. We have a huge wrestling meets there. We have volleyball. We have gymnastics. So, I mean, we got quite a few things there. Well, the only thing Cheerleaders. Is, right. you don't forget cheerleading. Yeah, well, no, because that, that's a sport, too. Yeah. But <laughs> what always kind of bothered me is they didn't make it with enough seating capacity so we could have the regionals there. Oh, the region there. But yeah. back to, we were thinking about doing things that were for local sport, local sports right. Right? Uh, you know, we, and we bring a lot of t you know the economic impact that we give the city is huge I mean you know, the amount of teams we bring in from out of town and the national tournaments we have there you know Nike had a big events there in two weeks there Nike had a girls and boys basketball events there right. so we have a lot of big events there only thing we didn't do is make it a one court facility that, right. uh, and we had, and you had the mindset you do a one court facility yeah but and, but you know the 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 Kids that, that get to use this facility, it's just, you know, it's state of the art. Oh, no, no. I just, but, but I remember the time we used to play behind outdoors at Eaton. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, so now, the, 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 now the kids are playing an indoor facility. Yeah. Is, 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 is amazing. It's is, is a thanks for the community. And, you know, I've talked a lot of the track coaches that go over there. And to be able to, to even practice rotate on a rotating uh, basis, to practice indoor yeah on an indoor track like they're going to run into when they go to the, the regionals and the states and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's, that's just got to be unbelievably great for the, for the track people. Well, you look at what we have done with a with facility of that nature. Look at the kids that sit in Hampton. Now, this year, we will probably have five in, in basketball, four or five kids that uh, you know, they're going to be Division One, high major Division One basketball players right here from the city of Hampton, and we haven't had that for years. All right. I've got one last question for you. If you could sit down with a bunch of youngsters and tell them what it takes to be successful, not only in athletics, but in life, what would you say to them? Work. No substitution for work. Passion? You, and passion. And you got to be able to work. I mean, you got to work hard. I mean, you, I think... People don't understand working hard. I mean, and, and because the competition level, Bob, is so hard to be anything, whether it be an athlete or worker. Life is so global now. Right. But when I grew up, it was just being the best player in your state. In your state. When, when we were coaching with Lonzo and them guys to be best player in the country, now you got to be the best player in the world. I mean, it was just, just a good example. And China got, China got 100,000 got 100, seven-footers. <laughs> you look at the global market. The NBA makes up 18% of the uh, 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 is global. The English is a second language. Whether, whether you, uh, I mean, you have to be global. If you'll be a business person, you got to be global. Everything is global now. I think <laughs> now to people, you just have to work. So you got to compete. You got to be able to compete. You got to have very, very, very good passion for whatever you want to do. Well, bro, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. I'd like to ask to thank you for tuning in to LFC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Boo Williams, for coming in. I'm Bob Hintz. Until next time.